I'm very honored to be joined here today by Ken Wilson. Thank you very much, Ken, for joining us. You're most welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken has been doing a lot of things over the, past, the years that he's been teaching, teaching, uh, uh, training teachers, writing course books, writing songs. A huge span of work. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm quite old. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. yes. Any new projects? In the oh, work? yes, always, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've just finished writing um, a primary course, six mm -hmm. levels primary course mm -hmm. for Indonesia. Oh, okay. okay. And we're doing the audio recordings of that now, so that'll be out um, in the autumn. Mm -hmm. And I'm now writing a, an, a, a secondary course for uh, a, a publisher called Richmond, mm -hmm. UK, yes. And uh, apart from that, I'm still traveling around, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds interesting. Good mm -hmm. luck with those projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to your session now. Mm -hmm. Would you like to tell us a few things about it? Well, I did two sessions okay. here at uh, ISTEC this time, mm -hmm. which was very nice. The first one was a joint session with Özge mm -hmm. Karoglu, who I think everybody in Turkey knows now, mm -hmm. who is um, fantastic working with young children and with technology. Mm -hmm. And we had a conversation about the fact, I love the things that she does and she quite likes my workshops. But, you know, my, my workshops often use little pieces of paper and they, they seem to be quite successful. Her stuff uses technology effortlessly. So we decided, actually we were having breakfast at a conference in Japan. Mm -hmm. And we decided it'd be nice to do a, a workshop showing that you can have a, a class where there's technology available and there's pieces of paper available and they're equally valuable and the students can have... Uh, equal va get equal value from those activities. So we did a, a workshop called The Joy of Tech and of No Tech. Mm -hmm. And we did five activities, a techie one from her, no, six, a, a paper one from me. So she did three, I did three. And it was really, really nice. I was so pleased we'd done that. And today, I because the um, I think that the conference uh, title was a really, really interesting one, and I think one of the most important things we need to think about from the, the students' perception through their eyes is their type of ability yeah. because we always talk about mixed ability classes when in fact often classes have people with lots of different talents and abilities not necessarily the ones that work well when they're reading a text or trying to work out a, a, an answer to a grammar problem and my basic feeling about this is that our system is completely wrong that we only ever test people's ability to read write and count yeah. after 500 years of exams we still have no no better way of establishing how good a student is in all of their possible talents except to give them a written examination or a multiple choice test uh, or ask them to add up some sums, right? And um, so part of it was about the theory of multiple intelligences, but generally speaking about how to go into a classroom where you know that some of the students will find what you might call a traditional way of, of delivering information about a language, teaching a language, they might find that difficult. So to find ways in which we can vary the style of things to include um, activities which cater for all different kinds of ability. It's very interesting mm -hmm. and I really like the title of your session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not mixed ability, I'm differently talented. Yeah, yes. Very nice, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. nice, nicely put mm -hmm. and from a very nice aspect scene also. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I liked it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which sessions did you enjoy so far watching? Um, well, of course, Professor Mitra was, is just astonishing, astonishing, his whole um, thing. What, but I did have a, a, we've had some interesting conversations based on Professor Mitra's idea that, um, you know, you can walk into a classroom and give students a question which they then go on and work on and find the answers to um, on, online somewhere. And if you actually look more deeply into that, I, I think the session was perfect. What he did was absolutely perfect. But when I started thinking about, in the future, if a syllabus for a lesson involves, as he suggested, uh, can you kill a goat by staring at it? There's your question. Uh, I think teachers might, might, could get quite lazy. They just have a syllabus which involved them going into a classroom, sending their students off to different computers with a single question. You think mm -hmm. about it, they could yeah. actually just spend the rest of the time doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So I was, that was interesting. I think his um, presentation asked as many questions as it answered. Yeah, mm. He was amazing. Mm. Yeah. 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 And of course, JJ. Mm -hmm. I think JJ Wilson, who was on um, today, uh, is possibly the best speaker on the circuit at the moment. And I think Istek were very, very clever to get him to come and do a, a talk here. He's very, very good. 
He was mm. really good and mm. very motivating and enthusiastic. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, to close the interview, if you could give a piece of advice to the teachers watching us right now, what would you tell them? Well, we had, I don't know if you know, I also did something else. I did a, a question and answer session with some students mm -hmm. yesterday. And their last question, there was me and Herbert Puchter and um, Teresa Dorwelli and Jamie Keddy on video mm -hmm. answering questions that the students asked about our work and our lives. And the very last one was, what piece of advice would you give to teachers? And I will give this piece of advice always to teachers, which new teachers, old teachers, get some sleep. You know, get enough sleep to work successfully as a teacher and look after your voice. Mm -hmm. Your voice is your most important uh, asset. You know, what you do, and if you don't use your voice well enough, you could lose it uh, and, you know, before your teaching career is, mm -hmm. is through. So really, sleep, and drink lots of water, and look after your voice. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ken, for this interview. Thanks, Becky. Thank nice you very to much. Talk to you.